Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and we are at the start of our journey asking the most important question first, which is what is the Azure Developer Associate? So it's a Microsoft certification about the Azure platform focused on multiple ways to deploy web apps to Azure, a deep dive into Azure functions, and I mean seriously deep, a broad look into application integration services, which Azure has a lot of, uh, to the point where they have ones that cover the same purpose, and lots of hands-on with Azure CLI, SDKs, or programmatic interactions with Azure services, so anything to do with the Azure API. The course code for the Azure developer is the AC204, not to be confused with the 104, but it is very complementary to the other course, which we'll talk about when we talk about the roadmap. And I do wanna point out that Microsoft Azure is a very code and script driven uh, platform compared to AWS and GCP. So it's better having developer knowledge and I actually consider it a must when we're working with uh, Microsoft and I'll explain why here in a bit. So who's the certification for? We'll consider the 204. If you are a web app developer looking to pick up cloud skills or transition to a cloud developer role, you are a cloud developer, cloud engineer who needs to integrate Azure services into your app or deploy your app to Azure, or you need to learn a lot about Azure functions to build service workloads. But as a note, I kind of feel that this is an essential certification at the associate level. And so looking at a roadmap, I always suggest people to start with the AZ-900, which is the fundamentals, because it's gonna really uh, help you get not just introduced to Azure, but also the testing experience because it is a much difficult and different experience than the other two providers. And generally from that, we usually recommend to go with the administrator, the 104, because that is a broad amount of services. And that is the most common use case why people are on Microsoft Azure, because they're usually IT dev shops. Um, but as a complimentary, usually after that, I would recommend to go to the developer, the AZ204, because the nature of Azure is that a lot of the UI is, like, um, is script driven. So when you are in the portal, uh, you have to touch script more often than not, or you might run into features that simply do not exist in the portal. So you have to use scripting. Uh, so really to be a proficient per, uh, person working on Azure, you need developer programming experience. And so I always pair these two together. Now, where you wanna go after that is up to you. A lot of people like to go to the solutions architect or the DevOps engineer expert. There's a bunch of other um, associates and I consider these kind of like, uh, like mid-level specialties where you can do those. There's of course more certifications than we're looking at that is actually here. Um, but you know, these are the most general ones here. So, you know, hopefully that gives you an idea that you should uh, probably take the developer after your associate. Um, and then after that, you can go wherever you want. In terms of difficulty, the Azure developer associate is, I would say two times harder than the AWS developer associate and three times more difficult than the GCP associate. And I'm talking about the exams, not necessarily the application um, of being a developer in the platform, but just the fact that the way Azure makes their exams is they really want to test for practical knowledge. So it's not about conceptual or strategic information, not to say that there isn't those kind of questions in the exam, but it's a huge focus on, do you know how to actually set things up? And do you know the nuances of them? So uh, you're going to see a lot more labs than normal in my courses for this particular study course. How long does it take to pass? Well, it depends on you, but to give you a general idea, if you're a beginner, so let's say you had the AZ-900, but not much hands-on experience, you've never written code or a tech role, then you're looking at 50 hours. Even if you take in the AZ-104, it's still gonna take this long because it's a different, uh, different beast than the 104. If you're experienced, so you already have practical knowledge uh, working on Azure, uh, you've deployed apps to Azure, you have a strong background in programming, you're looking at 20 hours, and so I like to uh, set a goal of somewhere in between, so 30 hours, average study time. So for lectures and lab, that's gonna uh, take up 50% of your time. So, you know, when we're looking at that, it's probably more uh, labs than lecture. And then the other part of it is 50% practice exam. So I recommend you study one to two hours for 20 days and really do spread that out because if you do too much of it together, uh, you have a, a, a good chance of uh, forgetting information so, you know, make sure you spread that out and make sure that it's, it becomes part of your long-term memory. So where do you take the exam? Well, you can do it in person or test center or online from the convenience of your own home. So Microsoft delivers exams via two different uh, providers, PSI Online, Pearson View, and those are online proctor exam systems. Both of these providers have their own test center networks. So whether you want the online experience or in person, it's just gonna be up to you. I strongly recommend if you can to go in person, it's less stressful if you have the opportunity, if you can't, you have to do it at home. It's up to you which one you want to choose. They're more or less the same. Um, I like um, 
Pearson View, but some people like PSI. So it just depends. After you take a couple, you'll decide which one you like. And if you're wondering what the word proctored means, it means there's a supervisor. Somebody is monitoring you as you taste, taste, uh, take the exam to make sure you're not cheating. That's the whole idea behind it, to make sure these are legitimate uh, um, scores. So what does it take to pass exam? Well, you're going to have to watch video lecture, memorize key information. You have to do hands-on labs and follow along within your own account. Uh, you, I would recommend paid exams to simulate the real exam. And I'm going to help you out by giving you your first exam for free. No credit card required. Just sign up on Exam Pro and um, you, know, you can go get access to that and other free additional content that I strongly recommend that you do. Um, for the content outline, we got five domains. Each domain has its own weighting that determines how many questions in a domain will show up. And Azure is interesting because they do a range of questions. So it's not a guaranteed of a certain amount of questions on exam. It's going to be between ranges. So the first is developer, or sorry, develop Azure uh, Compute Solutions, develop Azure Storage, implement Azure Security, monitor, troubleshoot, and optimize Azure Solutions, connect and consume to Azure services and third party services. In terms of the grading, you got to get about 70% to pass. Uh, and they use scaled scoring. So, uh, you know, it's not always exactly on the dot, but you, for the most part, if you get 70%, you should pass. In terms of um, amount of questions, there's between 40 to 60. You probably would see 55 questions. So you can afford to about, get about 12 to 18 wrong. Some questions are worth more than one point. There's no penalty for wrong questions. Some questions cannot be skipped. And for the formatted question, you got multiple choice, multiple answer, drag and drop, hot area, case studies, all sorts of kinds uh, of questions uh, that you'll encounter much more difficult than the AZ-900 for sure. In terms of the duration, you get three hours, so that's about one minute per question, but of course, different question formats are gonna be different. Uh, you have 180 minutes for the exam time. Your seat time is 210, so you have about um, 30 minutes um, in terms of the whole time that you should schedule. So even if you have 180 minutes, you have to consider the entire time to get logged in and all that other stuff. So time to review instructions, read and accept the NDA, complete the exam, provide feedback at the end. And I'm telling you, if you're taking this online, show up early because so often you're fiddling around with your license to try to get it to scan properly and then they don't like it so you have to scan it twice so you know if you can show up an hour early and make sure you block that time uh this exam is valid for i believe two years uh, before recertification so you know there you go